All right, last, uh, before we get into that, I want to talk about this. The State Department last year spent $500,000 in taxpayer money, your money, to support the rights of atheists and other non-believers overseas. Whether or not this is even constitutional, it, it certainly fits a pattern with the Biden administration, which has seized upon every opportunity it can to promote uh, abortion and the, really kind of an anti-Christian agenda. Join me now to discuss this, as well as his vote yesterday against the redefinition of marriage, is Congressman Glenn Grothman. He serves on the House Oversight Committee and Reform Committee. He is the uh, on the House Education and Labor Committee, as well as the Budget Committee. He represents the 6th District of Wisconsin. Congressman, welcome back to the program. Glad to be on the show again. Uh, a lot of activity going on here in Washington, and I I would say that the activity of the Biden administration is not kind of, it's it's all the way what I would call anti-God, anti-Christian. I mean, you add up all the things that have been going on here in June, it's just it's just stunning uh, what has become of this country. And of course, you're talking about a majority party. I mean, you know, um, a clear majority of Americans voted for the Democrats instead of the Republicans uh, in their House races two years ago. I'm not sure if this is what they expected. But it's important that you're doing a good job to at least explain to the public what they're getting for their votes two right. years ago. You, you know, Glenn, I, I mean, having served on the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom, uh, I understand the importance of religious freedom as a foreign policy mm -hmm. objective because countries that have religious freedom also have greater economic stability and social stability. So that, I see that. I understand that completely as a foreign policy objective. But how is promoting atheism beneficial? And isn't that really kind of establishing a religion by it promoting atheism? Well, Tony, the way I look at it is this. Um, John Adams said that our Constitution is made for a moral and religious people. And clearly, God has blessed this country beyond what any other country throughout human history has had. Now, when we begin to send out grants to promote atheism, the grants by itself are horrible, and I'm sure whatever literature these nonprofits come up with will be bad. But just the fact that the United States is sending out these grants, people around the world look up to the United States. They want to say, what is the secret of America's success? Why is it so much, why is it so much better to live in the United States than Cuba or Greece or Ethiopia or wherever? And when, when the word gets out that the United States is sending out um, grants to people to promote atheism, we're kind of saying the secret to America's success is atheism. Now, in the relatively recent past, uh, you got, get back to the 1960s, only 2% of Americans said they didn't believe in God. That number has now gone up a little bit shy of 20%, which is a, a very disappointing thing for the country. And of course, I'm not talking about 2% of the people who believe in the divinity of Jesus Christ. I'm talking about only 2% across the board didn't believe in God. Now we are sending the message that the thing that makes America great is atheism. And I you know, got to ask yourself, what does God think about this? Uh, what does the American public think about it? What are those um, slumbering clergymen of America think about it. Uh, very scary thing. And of course, it's not uh, the only values that we're promoting abroad. There are other values that I think are questionable as well. Yeah. Well, I want to I, I want to kind of build on that because first off, I want to commend you for your leadership that you've shown defending natural marriage between a man and a woman. You voted uh, to defend that yesterday. And, and as we talk about religious freedom abroad, you have to see that the redefinition of marriage is an attack on religious freedom at home. How is it that some of your colleagues don't seem to see that? Well, I think what's happening is we have my colleagues, particularly the closer the district, the more likely you're going to find colleagues like that. Uh, you're going to find that because I believe the clergymen in this country have been asleep, uh, they believe it is the only way to get reelected, if not this time in the future. And I think a lot of them are making a political calculation and saying, well, the churches are kind of slumbering asleep. The popular culture is pushing more and more people to approve the, uh, the gay lifestyle. And therefore, politically, the way I'm going to keep my job is I'm going to vote um, that I, I respect or affirm gay marriage, which, of course, is something that would have been unheard of 40 years ago. But I think they are weighing up 
you know, who's going to win this fight? Is it going to be the Christian churches or, or religion in general, or is it going to be won by the, the atheists we just talked about, the type of people who are running Disneyland or running Hollywood and that sort of thing? And I think these politicians, some of which are not stupid at all, stupid people and normally, are, are making the political calculation that the churches will continue to be asleep and that, um, that two or four or six years from now, as their political career progresses, it would have been advantageous to side with the gay lobby. Uh, Glenn, you may be right, and the, the church may slumber, but God does not. And I, I think I would always choose, as you did, to stand uh, on the side of truth. Uh, out of time, I want to thank you for joining us. Always great to talk with you. Again, appreciate your leadership on Capitol Hill. Well, glad to, glad to be on the show again, and we'll, we'll have to talk again soon.